Hello and welcome back to another Lego Ninjago review. This time I'm here with set 71721 Skull Sorcerer's Dragon. It was released, this is a weird one, on the 1st of June 2020 uh, in the UK and Europe and the 15th of August US but then like widely around the US on the 24th of August. So that is, I don't know why the, the release date is all over the place for that. But anyway, getting into it, the set has 1,016 pieces, is rated ages 9 plus and comes with six minifigs. As you'll see there in the bottom right corner, we have Mia, Kai and Jay. Uh, also the Skull Sorcerer and two of the Awakened Warriors. The set retails at 79.99 in euros. $74.99 in pounds and $79.99 in dollars. The Grief Bringer appears in five episodes during season 13, Master of the Mountain. We first hear of the dragon in episode four during a flashback story told by a slave Gekel in the mountain's dungeon. He tells of a great warrior, Gilly, but a monk corrects him that it's Millie. Uh, spoiler alert, we find out that it's actually Lily, Cole's late mum. Lily ends up defeating the dragon and that's the last we hear of the grief bringer until episode 11 where the skull sorcerer reanimates the beast's bones and keeps him alive with magic. We then see the bone dragon appear in episodes 13, 15 and 16. The first time we actually see the beast whole he breathes a green flame resembling the skull sorcerer's magic and is briefly beaten by Zane and Lloyd but quickly reanimates as the skull sorcerer's magic flows through him. We later see the end of his tail is a blade and cuts through the stone as if it was butter. Then during the finale he's kept in a cage in the dungeon but easily melts the bars to escape and join the chaos of the final battle. He takes on the ninjas and Princess Vanya's dragon Chompy but as soon as the skull sorcerer is beaten by Cole so too is the grief bringer as Chompy crashes through him while the skull sorcerer's magic fades away from his body. Getting a look at the back of the box now, it's a quite a hefty box, I don't understand why it's so long, it kind of takes up a little bit too much space, uh, probably more than is needed. Uh, on the back here we have a lot to talk about, so we see, standard enough, we see the uh, dragon from a different perspective there, from a different angle, and we see all of the stuff that comes with the set as well in there. Um, but around here is where it gets interesting, so inside it says game experience inside. Uh, which means, I think, is it this part comes with it? Or is it this part? Or is it both? I think it's these. All this comes with it, right? And then it also shows, uh, I'll get on to that in a second, but it also shows then uh, some discs some th that can get fired out of these things, which is new to me. I don't know is it new to Ninjago at all, but it's definitely new to me. That is uh, an interesting little uh, trick there. Uh, they seem like one by one little tiles that you shove in there and then you push down on the thing here and they fire out. Kind of like uh, stud shooters, spring loaded shooters, all that. It's just another uh, method of projectile that they have. Uh, this is completely added in just for the set. Uh, this wasn't in the show, but he drops a kind of green magic ball of spiders from his chest. So that is nice for play, definitely. Uh, keeps it kind of open-ended, uh, but yeah, I, I do like that little feature, but it, I, I would prefer to leave it in like that and kind of represent the magic that is flowing through them. I think it's really cool. Um, but getting on to this, now this is a board game, and I've heard that the instructions aren't that straightforward to read, but there is videos on, all over YouTube to figure out the uh, instructions properly. I've, I just heard that they don't give a, an accurate description of how the game is played. Um... But essentially, it looks like you can play a little bit of the game with just this set. So if you add all of these together, you will create this larger board, which turns into a board game. Uh, if you don't want to play the board game, I will just mention that it is actually quite a nice looking thing just for the whole dungeon to be uh, part of your play set. You know, I do like that idea but apparently you start on uh, an arrow somewhere roll the dice and move that many things around and you know there's uh, traps and stuff as well if you land in a trap you get trapped uh, for a turn i don't know really how to play the game i'm assuming that you have to get up here and that's the aim of the game but it's really interesting i do like and dislike it one point about liking it is that it's interesting it's a good sales tactic for people to want to get the lot of them just to play the game 
Um, one thing I don't like about it is you have to get a lot of them to play the game, you know? Um, it's kind of like selling a game and then selling loads of add-ons and uh, in-game purchases and stuff, and I don't really like in-game purchases. This is their equivalent to in-game purchases. Um, but it is interesting a little bit, you know, I, I don't really know what else to say about that. You can see there, there's little boxes there. Obviously, if you land on that, um, you're out. The, the statue falls if you land on that one. Um, I'm not quite sure what it means, though. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I said, you can get the instructions online and stuff, but I won't be buying uh, the rest of these sets myself. Uh, noticeably, you do get one of the swords of deliverance in here just one so if you want the other one another great sales tactic if you want the other one you have to get one of those other sets uh, i think it comes in this set and that set and these are the two white swords the ivory swords of deliverance but yeah that's pretty much all i can say about the box quite an interesting uh, thing they've got on here but yeah, let's get on to the review. So here we have everything that comes with the set. There's quite a lot to unpack here, so I'm gonna try and be fast enough about it. You get your three Ninjago ninjas and with their little attachments there, and you get three bad guys. You get the Skull Sorcerer and two Awakened Warriors with their attachments in front of them as well. You get four spare discs for the shooters here. Uh, they are also filled up, there's three in each. Um, you get two of these. They are identical and you put your figures on them and we'll get into that later. Uh, you also then get this build which attaches to this build. Um, and then you also get the die essentially. Um, it's, it's, you put your figure in it and you spin it around and it's the dice. And then of course you get your giant dragon there as well. He is pretty big i have to say he is really really massive and the set altogether does take up a lot of space that is something i will mention it's something you need to think about before buying it um but yeah let's get into the minifigs so first up here we have nia in her armor that was given to her by the geckles just notably i'm going to say this once um the geckles armor is the silver armor that they're wearing and the gold version of that that we'll see uh kai wearing in a minute is actually uh, from the months so that is just a little bit of kind of backstory as to why they're wearing the armor they are um, I think it's a really nice minifigure you, you can see a really nice level of print in there you got a printed belt as well and printed legs which is always good two different color arms there which is nice to see I love when they do that um, also then you will see she comes with her printed uh, shield which is actually really nice I like the print on that too and she comes with her spear um, she comes then with a separate helmet mold, so that is uh, a really nice little mold. I think it's very cool. It kind of reminds me of Shredder from uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. She also then comes with her shoulder pad there. And notably, the shoulder pad doesn't really take away too much from the print. You'll see she has another uh, face print there, a more happy face print than the last one. Um, and yeah, I'm really definitely happy with this minifigure. I think the colors are really nice looking on it uh, and the little details as well, like the little bit of fur under there uh, just around here is really nice as well. I'll show you now the back without the uh, armor on just so you can have a look at it. Um, and I think it's nice. It's pretty much the same as the front really, uh, but I will mention it is shiny as well. Uh, I don't know if you saw that represented that well. The armor part is actually shiny and that's really nice. But yeah, it's definitely really nice to get this minifigure uh, in this collection. All of these minifigures actually do come with a little clip on the back there. I'm assuming for their weapons or something, but they don't actually tell you on the instructions to put anything in there or on it. So, you know, that is uh, just kind of there, I suppose. You can use it for whatever you want. But definitely a lovely looking minifigure. I really like the colours and all and the printing is very well done. I love that. Uh, most of all, I think I love the head mould there, the helmet mould. I think it's great. Next up then we have Kai who uses the same helmet mould and armour uh, mould. Uh, but the difference is the colour where as we saw a uh, grey and silver one, we now see a red and gold one. The red and gold looks really nice together. Uh, you'll see there he has a printed torso which is also shiny the same as Nia's was but this one is gold. You'll see his belt is printed there and his legs are printed. A nice level of detail there. 
both of these arms are gold rather than one being a different color like in the Deckel's armor. Uh, the Mons armor seems to have both arms on. That's nice. You will see under the head, under the helmet mold then, you will see that he has a little angry face there with a little plaster up on the top there as well. And a kind of happier, kind of almost embarrassed looking face there. Like he did something wrong and someone was like, no, this is the right way. And he was like, ooh, -hoo, uh oh. But um, yeah, definitely a nice figure. I'll show you what the back print looks like now. So the back print is noticeably different on this one than it is on Nia. It's not really the same on the back as it is on the front, like the Gecko's armor was. Uh, the Munt's armor seems to be a lot different, uh, which is nice. Nice to have a little bit of the uh, different contrast there. He also then comes with his shield, which is a different print than the Gecko's one. The Gecko's is silver and seems to have a dragon on it, uh, whereas the Munt's one is gold and seems to have a lion on it, which is definitely really nice. Uh, he also then comes with his machete there as well, which is a little brick built handle for it as well. So that's nice, uh, nice little attachments there definitely. And I think the figure looks really nice. I really just am personally a fan of pearl gold, so it'll drive a figure up for me regardless. But apart from that, it is definitely still a really nice minifigure. And the last one of the ninjas then we see is uh, Jay and he comes with his Gekkel armor so he has the same shield as Nia does and he has the same kind of armor except instead of grey it's blue because that's the general colour of the ninjas. They all have their own individual colour so that's why it's like that. But yeah we see some nice uh, kind of design on this one as well. We see more of that kind of shiny uh, torso there, the kind of shiny breastplate there as well with uh, Jay's normal clothes underneath. Again, we see belt printing and leg printing, which is definitely nice to see. I love when they add that in. And again, like Nia, we see one different colored arm. On the back then, much like Nia, he has quite similar armor to the front, but just less, I suppose, less detail on the back. Um, I I'm kind of confused as to why they put detail like this on the back though, because they do cover it over. But uh, I know it's still nice for them to go the extra mile and not just be lazy about it, I suppose. You'll also see then a little bit of a worried face, kind of the same as Kai's was there, maybe a little embarrassed. And then a more stern, ready for action kind of face there on the front. He comes, of course, with his flail and the typical shield, the same one Nia had as well. Uh, the, the flail is really nice though, they, they build these little, little pyramid pieces around uh, a one by one brick with little studs uh, circling the outside of it, so that's really nice, I really do like the design of that. Uh, with the gold chain there as well is really nice but another really great addition to uh, the set and I think the minifigure looks really well. Next up we have the Skull Sorcerer and his Enchanted Skull. Now this is a really nice minifigure. Uh, you can see the level of detail on the print in there, uh, just on the front there is really nice. You can see some kind of Chinese or Asian in general symbols, I'm not quite sure, uh, running down either side there and you'll see some nice ropes and stuff and uh, a nice kind of design there in the middle there as well. Definitely nice to see. He comes with the skirt piece, as you'll see there, rather than legs. Um, he comes with wide hands, of course, which is uh, nice to see, I suppose. Nice contrast. And then he comes with this kind of brick-built backpack thing that kind of makes wings uh, be attachable to him. So that is definitely nice. He uses the kind of normal old wing pieces there and a nice kind of standard enough build for that um the head then is the one thing i will say about the head about the helmet uh, a mask sorry is that it should have had a mouth it doesn't have a mouth so that would have been really cool to see there it would have just finished off the character really well i think but they didn't include that unfortunately that is just something worth noting you'll see then underneath the mask he has a kind of scary looking face because obviously enough the uh Oh, the king, I'm not sure his name, is possessed by this whole skull, um, kind of, kind of possessed, I suppose, I suppose he let it happen to himself, but anyway, it is definitely a nice, uh, print there, some scary looking face underneath there with the, uh, r green eyes there as well, definitely nice, uh, little print on there. The skull is nice, it comes with the, uh, a different print than the other skulls we get in the set, and it's a different colour, I don't know, is it glow in the dark? But it definitely is a creepy looking uh, addition to the set. And of course it really does make sense with this minifigure as well. It's a really nice addition with this minifigure. Just to have the thing complete. Because they don't always do stuff like that. Beautiful figure. Really nice with the wings. And I'm glad you get the uh, skull with it. It looks great. And finally then we get the awakened warriors that are summoned by the skull sorcerer. And I think they're really nice. We get the same uh, headpiece, this the skull 
is the same mold as the skull from the skull sorcerer the possessed skull um he comes with a little helmet there which uh is new to me i don't think it's new to lego ninjago by any means um but it is definitely a new one for my collection just being new to ninjago myself uh, of course it holds a bone on top as you see there the bone comes separately and just to give you a little look at the head there as well it is the exact same as the other held as the, as the other skull there uh we'll see a kind of new enough uh mold for the skeleton torso as well which is interesting to see there you got the typical arms and uh, typical legs but it's just done in black this time which is really nice you get an, an identical one here as well so i'm not going to dwell on him but um you also get little kind of shoulder pads for him as well which really finishes off the figure nicely and makes him look like a warrior as rather than just an awakened skeleton he comes of course with his samurai sword his katana uh which really finishes off the figure nicely i think um the I'll just give you a look at the back of the head there there's nothing interesting about it but i just thought i might as well but yeah definitely a nice little figure to add to the set um it does kind of finish off the set and it does add great kind of options for playability because now you have an army to fight against your uh ninjas on now to the little game pieces and these are interesting because each one of those little hearts can fold down on these things here so you have essentially three lives and in the game you can regain lives if you land on the right square i'll get into more of that when i show you the next part of it they stand the figures on this um i'm not sure if they do the whole time uh, i'll be doing a video about the whole board game so i'll let you know all the instructions and like the details and stuff uh, there we also get for some reason a box there to the side i'm not sure what that's for maybe it's for the weapons or something but uh this one then is identical uh, at the moment we've got one for kai and uh, jay we didn't get one for nia in this uh, set for some reason and then you've got your die so your die has two little kind of uh like little kind of studs in there and then you put your figure on those studs and what this does is it gives you a kind of a little thing to hold on to for to have the ability to spin it so that is definitely very interesting it will then as you see there land on something and it's landed on one and heart so if you were in a fight you would win it and if you weren't you would move one space that is definitely a little bit interesting there i like how they've uh, made this kind of mechanism i think it's really cool um but yeah i mean what else can i say it's a nice little addition but again i will be doing a video on this if i can get all the pieces together and here we see the first part of the board game coming together so the little arrow here that tells you where to start so you start here uh, and you just make your way like whatever way around the board i suppose um and this thing spins just let me give you a little bit of function there that's pretty much all you can move these i don't know why you'd need to um maybe when the whole board game is together it, 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 we'll, that, we'll get our answer then but i don't know what to say about this really you know it looks like exactly like it does uh in front of you here uh you can use this to spin the thing i'm guessing if you get four if you get three you get one two three and then you get to choose but if you get one and then you get two one two you have to skip that one um i'm guessing i don't know again i'll be doing a video on this later uh you got your love heart here that i was talking about so if you do manage to get on to this one you can take that love heart down and take it back for yourself so that is one way to replenish lives in the game i think it's cool i think it looks nice um but it'll definitely be really interesting uh, when it's all put together like for a little dungeon but there's not really an awful lot i can say about this on its own like that it does clip on to the next part of the review, which is uh, this little build here, uh, just like that. But yeah, that will lead us into the next little part of the review, which is uh, this bit. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. It seems to be the end of the line for this set. So if you wanted to play a very mini version of the game, you would play it all the way up until X marks the spot here. Uh, if it was the bigger sense of the game, I guess you have to get to the sword first and then get to your main goal. Uh, not quite sure. It doesn't really tell you the rules that well in the instructions. But the build itself does look quite nice. And this apparently is a statue of Lily. So that's really interesting. Falls down on you if you pick the wrong move. 
or the die rolls not in your favor see some nice uh kind of green magic flame coming out there which is really nice now one thing i will mention is the sword the ivory sword of deliverance um it's big it's definitely bigger than i thought it would be or should be like it's the same size as that i don't think it should be that big i think it's more of a a dagger rather than like a proper full-blown sword but i could be wrong i could be wrong um i again i only watched a small bit of it uh, i think this definitely looks cool this bit definitely looks cool uh but there's not again an awful lot i can say about it joining together then um it does look a little better and just making sense of it you can roll the dice uh start here roll the dice a couple of steps i think you roll again here to determine whether you go where you go um, if you land here, you get a fight and you have to roll the dice again to see if you win the fight or lose it. And if you land here, you get a heart. You can keep that. Uh, again, if you land here, you can roll the dice and see what your fate is. Either get got by that or not. And then a fight here again and X marks the spot. So you're trying to get to here essentially. But again, small enough build. Not much more I can say about it. Happy with it, but it, it's, it does definitely look unfinished. And that will lead us on to the star of the show. Um, this is really big. As you can see, I needed to clear away space just so you could see it properly. So basically, there's a couple of things. You get four extra studs with the stud shooters, as I said. So I'll get rid of them now just for the sake of space. Um, these stud shooters, just to get these out of the way, uh, they do work well. Like, you push on this and then it, it fires out. They don't have the the best kind of force in them so they don't fire out like a massive amount or a massive distance or anything like that they do still you know they still work <laughs> they don't work well but they do work you know the wings won't really go down past here because of this bit is like keeping them up now i don't know why that is why they haven't just let the wings come down so you can kind of put them towards the ground or something like that the only way to really get more space out of this guy is to curl his wings in like that you know and that doesn't really look great i mean it looks cool at the same time these are still cool to see but i don't think his wings would be curved in like that you know so that is maybe a little bit of a problem um you will also be able to put them forward like that or back a little bit or up or if i close them like that maybe that kind of looks okay as well but I will say the wings are just a little bit kind of clunky, you know, they're, they're not exactly the, the greatest design on them there. Now the tail next up is nice, uh, it does kind of wiggle on its own sometimes to its own free will and stuff, but if you do want to like set it in stone in a certain way, you probably can get it to sit in whichever way you want, as long as it's not too far over, because the weight of it will kind of bring it fully into the body then you see like that um there's a little blade on the tail which is uh kind of accurate to the show which is really nice that they've added in there i think it looks pretty cool i am happy with the look of the tail i think it looks really cool as well at the same time it looks bony it looks with like a little bit of armor or something a rock maybe even I'm running through it there so that is interesting um the legs are okay i think the back legs are a little bit stumpy i think they could be uh a little bit cooler looking uh, for the sake of a bone dragon that's resurrected and kept alive to the power of green magic. I mean, it sounds so cool. I think they really should do it more justice uh, by giving it maybe these kind of legs on the back as well. You know, keep bulking it up there a bit. Uh, it's the exact same on the other side. But it does, however, have good range of movement. You can move it back and forward like that, up and down like that, like he's uh, on a, going to a fire hydrant there a little bit. And then his legs are, or feet, sorry, are quite nice there. They're on these little ball joints, so you can kind of wiggle around there. Definitely nice to see. Um, his toes also move, like, I mean, if that's something that interests you. His front leg then doesn't move from here down. It does, however, move from here down and has a ball joint there. So it does move forward and backwards. It moves slightly left and right, but not a whole pile. Um, but the bottom foot, the, the bottom joint then is a ball joint. So that kind of moves all around the place, same as the back foot. And again, the toes, you can move uh, if you want to. I'm not sure why you would, but maybe he's standing on a rock or something. I don't know. Um, and then on the other side, it's the exact same for the feet. Now the feet, 
are kind of just a little bit awkward. They're a little bit clunky, a little bit stumpy in places, and I just think they probably could have been done a little better, especially if this moved, that would have been game over. It would have been a class set, you know, but it just, it, it does, I mean, same with Zippy the Jungle Dragon. It was a little bit kind of clunky or just out of place a bit, you know, so that is something worth mentioning. Um, the head then is nice because it has like the ball joint there so it can move left and right uh, a good degree there and it moves up and down as you will you can turn it all around here if you want as well because of the ball joint and the neck then is the exact same you will see the same ball joint on there which is you know nice it's nice there that you get full range of movement there full range of motion there um, also then the jaw the jaw opens up like that it does look pretty cool uh, if you pose them in certain ways, like like shouting out to the sky or uh, trying to eat someone or something like that. It does look really well, I think. And then to the back, you'll see two studs there, which the Skull Sorcerer can actually sit on because of his uh, uh, little kind of skirt piece there. He sits on it rather nicely there, um, as you'll see. He will get knocked off easily enough, but I think that's kind of the point. You know, you want to kind of throw something at him and he fall off because he's the bad guy. Uh, he also comes with these two uh, flags on his back, which I didn't see in the show, but he didn't really have an awful lot of great angles at the show to see him properly in, in detail that much. So maybe there were there, but Lego do have a habit of adding in things uh, just for the sake of play uh, or for the sake of the set that weren't exactly in the show. And that brings me on to my next point, uh, which is the same point, which is uh, you see here on the back, there is a little kind of mechanism that you can push and that opens up his chest to release this ball of magic and inside the ball of magic you'll see all sorts of horrors you'll see like some spiders and bones and stuff in there so that's nice but it wasn't in the show so it is just added in for the sake of playability i think it's really nice at the same time uh, but also on the instructions for the game, I did see a spider there that looked like a ball, or looked like a dragon's wing, sorry. So I'm assuming that that means you drop the ball on them then or something. I'm not sure again, uh, but that is definitely a neat little function. You'll see there that it works pretty well with the uh, elastic band underneath here. Uh, it definitely, uh, oh, sorry, under underneath there. It definitely works rather well, so that is really cool. I think the underside looks class as well. With that rib cage, it looks really well. Now, there is a bit that's been falling off the entire time. This bit keeps falling off, so that's worth mentioning. Um, if a piece ever does like keep falling off during a review, um, and I'm not even playing with it, then that is kind of definitely something that will fall off during play as well. So it's, that's something to watch, you know, that is something worth noting. Um, but I think that's pretty much everything I've covered. I think the design of it is really nice. Like you can see more kind of bones here to make it look like the ribs. And again, with this piece, again, you will see there that the, um, the legs are kind of pushing up here a little bit at the back. Um, there's a little bit of space there that shouldn't be so you're gonna have to kind of I mean now he's like he was there for a second just standing on his front hands um, I mean Now both of his legs at the back are kind of like this one. That's that's not even on the ground You see and then this one is still kind of pushed up as well. So like that is a bit of an issue a bit of a balance issue and also you'll see there that it's come loose a small bit so maybe be gentle with uh, the joints like that and the legs and stuff uh, or he may be prone to falling over that is something that's disappointing definitely one disappointing thing about the set i will always try and highlight the bad points of the set um and like that is definitely one it was one in uh, zippy the jungle dragon as well so i i'm just Definitely really disappointed with that one because I didn't want that, you know, I mean he does he's, again He's standing at a weird angle there too. So I mean I'm gonna have to do some wiggling around to find out You know where he should be standing. So my final verdict is this do I think it's worth the price? Yes, you get an awful lot in it and it's massive uh, Do I think it's flawless? No, do I think it looks great? Yeah, 
For playability, I would say it's definitely good. It has a lot of functions there. It has the sort of deliverance there. It has a little kind of board game thing there. And it also, you know, doubles as just a normal dungeon. If you wanted to pretend it's a dungeon, trying to get through your way, trying to make your way through the dungeon and, you know, running into all these uh, mishaps and stuff, which is definitely nice. I think the character selection is very good in it. I think they're done well as well. The dragon then is definitely still nice as well because you can open up the ribs and drop that ball of magic containing spiders and bones and stuff and be creepy and stuff. And you can pretend it's fly. You can make his mouth and head move all around the place and put it into different positions and stuff. And the skull sorcerer can ride on the back of it. So that's definitely great for playability. I think it's a really nice set. For collectors, I think it's a nice thing to have as well because I think the Skull Sorcerer is a really nice figure to have. I think the Sword of Deliverance is a really cool piece to have. And I think the dragon itself is definitely a collectible kind of thing, you know. I think you can collect all the Ninjago dragons and I think this is one of the best ones uh, just looks-wise so far. Uh, but again, I've only seen pictures and stuff and like reviews and stuff of all the dragons. I've only got two dragons up until now. Uh, from display point of view, I think it's it's halfway there. You know, all the rest of the stuff in front of the dragon isn't really much of a display kind of thing, really. Uh, maybe the maybe the uh, statue here in the corner is nice for display, but the dragon itself looks class. I mean, if you get a nice position in him there and you get a nice place to store him, that'd be great. But he does take up an awful lot of space, so keep that in mind. Uh, whenever you're getting this if you are getting it for display I have no idea where I'm going to put them I'm honest to god I even in storage I think my storage spaces are too small uh, for where for for this guy to fit so that's definitely something you're going to have to uh, you know take into consideration uh, but definitely again it looks fantastic even if you don't want to use that ball in the middle for what it's for uh, display wise it looks like the the magic inside him that's keeping him alive or maybe his heart or his core or something uh, so that's really cool there i think as well and just to name out any flaws i found with it just before i sign off um i think the skull sorcerer definitely could have had a mouth he doesn't have a mouth on his uh, mask and that is kind of disappointing i think it would have looked really nice if they'd just printed on the mouth or even made a hole in the mask in the shape of the mouth that would have looked really cool um another problem i see is this is kind of useless to anybody um who you know it's kind of useless because it it's a very small part of the build and for anybody who doesn't really want to get the whole thing it's going to be com almost completely useless you know um also then when you pick it up when it's joined together you might forget that it's joined together but this connection connection isn't very good and will snap off like that so if you're just picking it up quickly and you forget about that then that might go flying you might get pieces everywhere and lose your ivory sword of deliverance and that that's a bad thing um other bad things then i will say about it is the instructions for this are not great at all really um but i do have to mention i really do, I'm, I'm in love with this whole spinning top uh, mechanism there you twist the head and so i just think that's really great but uh, other bad things about it then would be the legs as i mentioned on the dragon earlier uh, aren't really that easy to pose and sometimes he ends up being a bit too top heavy and his legs end up kind of up in the air also his tail isn't that like tough of a connection so it does wiggle on its own sometimes and that might not be ideal also i suppose a bad thing would be the size of it if it, it's hard to find somewhere to display it you know uh but again if that's not that isn't a massively bad thing i'm just trying to point out things here uh, another bad thing is these they don't work properly but the kind like they don't have that much tension in them so they don't actually fly that far away they kind of drop more than shoot you know um, unless you, you flick them maybe you're supposed to flick them to get the real effect out of it but uh, I think that's the main bad points oh last bad point the wings you can't really move the wings around that much uh, you don't have great posability in them um, but that I think is all the bad points I think the good aspects don't outweigh in number but in quality i think the good aspects do really outweigh it like the good aspects would be this is really cool the minifigure selection is really nice i think the minifigures over here with the helmet molds and stuff are really cool i think the lot of gold in there is really nice the spinning top is really cool um i think this looks good you know i did say it's useless and one of the bad parts is this uh, added in but it, it's again one of the good parts because it does still look kind of cool 
Um, and also another great part is you get the Sword of Deliverance and the dragon looks amazing once you find a way to display him. Um, but yeah, I think it's better set than it is bad, definitely. I think it definitely is. And I'm happy about the set. Uh, there's no regrets there at all, I think. So that'll pretty much do it for this video. Uh, the verdict is good. Um, not amazing, but definitely up on the 80% good kind of job rather than like, you know, 60% or anything like that. Um, I definitely am happy with the set and will be buying the rest of this and as I said doing a little video on that little board game uh, whenever I do collect all the rest of the pieces. Thanks a million for watching my video guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you did please leave a like down below, subscribe if you haven't already and comment down below if you think there's anything that needs to be said. Thanks a million guys, see you again, take care.